And hello everybody, this is Falcor and Naya bringing you the next video <laughs> because Stephanie is videotaping this and she thought that that was too cute so she had to put him in. Okay. <laughs> Alright, let's get right to it. We started over and I told you we were starting with the ABCs and the A was you were a god. Now it's been several days since I've done a video. Uh, I have since then turned 60, so yeah, it was a long time ago that we did those, that video, because I am now 60 years old, and things have changed immensely since then, immensely since then. Since then, you guys have now figured out what I really mean when I say you're a god, so I don't have to explain that anymore, right? Everybody knows what that means. That means that you're capital G, capital O capital D, omnipresent, omni-everything, have always been, will always be, and you really get it. You really get it, right? Okay, I'm going to assume that that's a yes, that you're all nodding your, your heads yes, and that you are on a planet in a game that is capable of, of uh, helping a god stay in amnesia, so they can play like they're just a little tiny, insignificant human on a little tiny, insignificant planet in a ginormous multiverse, right? And that would be a heck of a game, wouldn't it? To be able to convince a G.O.D. God that they are nothing, that they're insignificant nothing. Heck of a game, right? And it did take a great deal to get this game created. Now the next, the B in the ABCs, B is the game. And what I mean by the game. Because I've explained this, but this is extremely difficult to explain to you guys. Because what you think of as big is so much smaller than what big is. What what ginormous, or what's another word for big, an enormous, gigantic, um, is so much bigger than what your version of it is that I have no words for it. So I've got to use the words that you have, and they're not nearly big enough. So I'm going to try to explain again what I'm talking about when I say the game. So, what I'm going to say is, here we've got, here we've got, um, planet Earth, and this is planet Earth, and around planet Earth are all of these different planets, right? Here's planet, well, let's move now, planet Earth, start out there, now planet Earth is this dot here. Right there. That is planet Earth. And these are the other planets. And this dot right here is the sun. Okay? And that dot there is Earth. Okay. So we started... I'll do this slowly. We started... This is Earth. Right? Now we've changed to the dot in the middle is now trying to dry the board. Now the dot in the middle is the sun. That's the sun. This is wet. Now we've got the planets going around the sun. Hmm. You know, Steph. Right at the end of that, here, you take a picture of my dog. Pupper Nupper. Look at the puppy. Him say hello to everyone. Sleepy eyes. Where's Moppet? He's a fuzzle. <laughs> this should now be all technical difficulty. Videos. There 
was an eraser over there, but I cannot find it. So, we'll go back to this. Should be dry by now anyway. And okay, we're so back. now the dot in the middle. <clears throat> it's still not dry. It is raining out there. It's been raining for days and days here in Texas. So the moisture in the air is incredibly high. So getting anything to dry here is tricky. So maybe I won't use that moist end at all. Maybe I don't need it. <laughs> There's enough moisture in the air. <laughs> okay, let's try it again. Maybe we'll try a different color. Maybe that will help. I'm sure that's Clearly, logical that's, in some way. That's the problem. It's too dark. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, this worked. So now the dot in the middle is the sun. That's the sun. And here's all the planets going around and around the sun, creating our solar system. Here's the solar system with the sun in the middle, and here's Earth now. Now Earth isn't this big dot in the middle, which is you standing on this planet thinking, wow, this is, this is amazing, this is big, this is your world. You look around, you don't even look at the planet Earth. You look at the town that you're in, the city that you're in, as you walk day by day, and that's your world. You don't even see the whole planet Earth. But now I've taken the planet Earth and I put it in a solar system, and you're a little teeny tiny dot on that tiny dot. And now the tiny dot has become the sun. And this is the solar system. Now we're going to try to take a dry <laughs> part of this and now <laughs> what's going on? Now make that a whole bunch of dots. A whole bunch of dots. And this is the Milky Way. This is the universe that our solar system is in. Okay? So now the dot in the middle is our solar system. Okay? So now this is the solar system on that tiny dot. Within our universe. Right? Okay? So now, buried deep inside that solar system is our sun. And buried deep inside that area that's around the sun, that solar system, is the planet Earth. And standing on top of that Earth is you. Looking at your town, the country, or the city that you live in. All right, you with me? Stick with me here. Now when you look up at the at the uh, the sky around you, or if you go on the internet, you can go on the internet and you can look up uh, universes, right? You can look up other solar systems. If you'll just stop and you can look up um, universes. Pictures of the universe, pictures of solar systems. Uh, you could look up, what else can you look up? <clears throat> Multiverse? Can you look up that, get a picture of it? I don't know. Anything that you can go on the Hubble, is it Hubble? 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 Telescope. And you can get all of these pictures of all these beautiful systems that are out in place, out that are way far away from us, and it'll tell you how far away it is, and where it is, it is if you look up into the sky, so let's say you look up into the sky from that tiny little dot in that tiny little universe, I mean solar system, in that universe, you can see this other universe from a picture that is the same as our universe, right? And all you see is, like, this thing here. 
made up of all different colors. And inside of that is all kinds of planets and all kinds of moons and all kinds of solar systems. All this stuff that's inside of those two. And I think they're up to, I think now it's like 200 billion potential Earths are in our universe alone. In our universe alone. Okay. So, this, everything that I've just written down, that is all from the perspective of what humans can see. Okay? So, everything that I just talked about, everything you can look up on the internet, all of these different star systems that you can see up in the sky are only with human eyesight. Now, if you were to put a filter on the telescope that sees out there, if you put a different range on there, you'd pick up all different kinds of other stuff. Okay? So, now you know that, and you already know that, it, that we, you can put a filter on goggles and you can see with UV light, you can see with heat sensors, which is a def, another range. I think ultra, too. Ultraviolet light. Yeah. And all these other ways that you can put goggles on glasses. Goggles on, I mean, lenses on goggles, and you can see different ways. You can see different ways with, let's say, a microscope. A microscope can look at a leaf, and it can look at it much, much closer, and it looks completely different than it does with a human eye. So you've got all these different versions that you can look at things with, from magnifying it to, to looking at smaller, like the smaller aspects of it, like you could take a drop of water. It looks just like a drop of water to you, put it under a microscope, and you get it out of a pond, and now you've got a whole new world of living things. Living things that eat each other, living things that that uh, divide and and become more than just one. All this completely different world that's on a microscopic level, like the Grinch. Like the Grinch. Remember at the start of it, you know, you look into a snowflake, and then the the Whoville and all of that is oh. in the snowflake. Whoville, I get. But I don't remember the Grinch and the Snowflake. But go with what she said. <laughs> Whoville's a good one with the whole dandelion thing. That is, you know, what do you not know? And that's only what humans know right now, right? Compare that to what humans knew 200 years ago. Yeah, before, that was before airplanes and microwaves and cell phones and... DVD players and computers that would fit on your wrist. And look at how much changes have been in just 200 years. And that's a very short period of time compared to, say, the age of the planet, as humans know it. Alright? So are you getting all of the different perspectives and all of the different things that you can see with your human eyes and you can't see with your human eyes? Humans have five senses. And they're very limited compared to other animals that are on this planet. Very, very limited. Just with against the, the animals that we know of. Okay? So now I'm going to take it to the next level. Okay? Now what you don't see and what you don't know about is what people will call it, everybody has said that pretty much Earth has spent most of its time in the third dimension. I went with that name, although I assure you when it comes to vibrations and frequencies, there is nobody up there with a measuring tape that said, okay, that's the end of three, we're going into four. It's not like that. But because humans have, they like start to finish, beginning to ends, because you are in you are living in uh, time space, then in time space there are beginning and ends, there's ups, there's downs, there's in, there's outs, um, which this is all made up for a part of this game. It is a part of this game. It is not a part of any other game. Certainly no other game 
breaks down linear time space like it is in this game. That is a part of this game. Because of that, I am limited to your understanding of things as they are in linear time space, which also limits my speech and the available words that I have to use to explain this, which makes it even more difficult. So, what I want you to understand is start to understand that you are on one planet with human beings that see things a very specific way and that there are a lot of options out there. So now I want you to kind of roll with me on this and understand that as far as you can see, as far as your telescopes can see, I want you to put that all in one dot. Now we've taken from Earth being the dot to everything that you see and know about, it is now down in a dot. Okay? Now I want you to take this dot, throw it up into the sky and make it one star. Now back at doubt, out and understand that what is in this dot is in every star in the sky as far as you can see. And now you've got a beginning of the understanding of how big this game is. But not only that, take everything that I've just told you on the limited senses of human beings and understand that not only is it much, much bigger, you may have to rewind what I just said several times, go ahead and do that, and to really fathom how big this game is. Now I want you to understand that all of that ways of looking at all of that can be done from many different perspectives with many different versions of senses. They can be as limited as the five that a human being has to beings that have senses that are a million times more complex than the humans are. Humans on this planet, Earth, were here to, to become very specific in what they were doing, to become very focused. That's the reason why gods became humans with very limited understanding, with a great deal of amnesia, almost complete amnesia, almost 99.99999 percent amnesia of where they come from and who they really are with very limited senses, with very limited understanding so they could really focus in linear time space in a very slow way, a very dense physicality that is called 3D to be able to really break things down and create from that perspective. Okay? It's done on purpose. And Earth was the first one that did this as, as in, in a being like humans that were very conscious about everything that they did, but from a very linear perspective with linear time space. This was all done very specifically for to be able to create from this perspective, a very unique perspective, a perspective that had never been done before, a perspective that no one really thought could be done, uh, that no one even thought about doing. But it was the creator of this particular game who thought of doing this. Now let's back all the way up. Now you've got an idea of how big this game is, just a little bit of an idea about how big this game is. Now, this particular game, with everything I just described, now I want you to put all of that in another dot. Actually, that's too big of a dot. This is a tiny dot. Let's make it a tiny dot. Now again, throw this back up into the stars. And when you leave this game, when you truly die and leave the game, and when you leave this game, you are in now time. 
There's no more linear time space. There's no amnesia. There's no, uh, you know everything about everything. Uh, that is no big deal. Uh, as gods, we assume this. This is the norm. That is when you step outside of this little game. Now you take this little one up here, throw it up into the sky, and look up. And that tiny star that you can barely, barely, barely see, that is everything that is within the game. When I say the game, this tiny star that you can barely see when you look up in the sky is the game. This is the game. All the rest of those stars out there that you see when you look up in the sky, those are other games. Other games. Okay? Completely other games. This is outside of this game, this very complex game that you can be reincarnated in within this game for millions, hundreds of millions of lifetimes. That you can be reincarnated on, you can too up to this point, have been reincarnated a hundred million times on this planet alone. Or you could have been reincarnated within the game to billions upon billions of other planets and planetoid systems, other beings completely. But as long as you are in this game, which can be identified by there being duality, there's duality in everything within this game, and some sort of linear time space. As you raise in vibrations and come out of what you would consider a planet or solar system, and into the higher vibrations that planets have not been created yet, or they're not something that you focus on, the perspective before planets, either now or some other time, um, there's still some kind of linear time space, although it's not the same as it would be on Earth, as it's not the same on many, many other universes that are crossed from you, a long ways away from you. But there is some kind of linear time space within this game, and there's some form of duality. If you are experiencing any of those, if when you die or have an out of body experience, if you're having anybody tell you what to do in any way, shape, or form, they are within this game. Because outside of this game, in the now, you are a god, and no one tells us what to do. We just don't. It would never even, wouldn't even be thought about. You don't do that. In now time, there would be no one telling you to go do anything, because there's no going. Uh, there's no, you wouldn't be going somewhere, because that implies linear time space. So when you're assessing where you are, whatever, you've had an indie year and out-of-body experience, this is very important. Nobody tells a god what to do. So if you've got anybody telling you what to do, uh, they are within the game. If there's any kind of reference in any way, shape, or form to time or space, you're still within the game. Whenever you are out of the game, you are in now time, there is non-stop, instant, always ecstasy, not bliss, not love. It's far, far beyond that in outside not the game. Not peace. It's not peace. Exactly. It's not peace. It's not love. It's not bliss. It is pure de ecstasy. And it's ecstasy nonstop. And that is in now time, and you know everything all the time. That is, that is outside the game. Anything beyond that is inside the game. Being outside of the game and being inside of the game, one is not better than the other, okay? You are not, your job here on the planet is not to come here and forget you're a god and then remember you're a god and go back to now time. That is not the point. Uh, you can die and be, go back to being a god anytime you want. You could have not come here and stayed remembering that you're a god. That's not the point. The point has been, except for star seeds, and that's a Gaia issue, the point has been to come to this planet, forget that you're a god, and have the experience 
of forgetting that you're a god. And all that that implies. All that that implies. Like I've said before, it is like getting on a motorcycle and driving way too fast, getting bugs in your teeth, off scaring yourself to death, <laughs> jumping off of a jump, and landing, and going, it's the exhilaration, it's the high. It's like uh, naked and afraid. Those people leave behind everything. They go to a horrible place, and they can't wait to come back and do it again. People climb to the top of dangerous, dangerous mountain peaks. Uh, they don't do it because it's fun. They don't do it because they have to. They don't do it because they get a prize if they do it. They do it for the experience. People, entities, you have come here for the experience. And what plays out as being uncomfortable to, uncomfortable to you here will be, at the end of the day, when you leave, exhilarate an exhilarating experience. And some people, just like some people, climb mountain peak after mountain peak after mountain peak until they die frozen at the top of one of those mountain peaks. Some entities will keep coming back to this particular game over and over and over for hundreds and hundreds of millions of lifetimes. Not one or two. <laughs> Many, many more than that. Because they enjoy this game. Okay? Some other entities 